This is the um, podcast for take, how to take your impression on the ARC DT side of the course. We're going to take your clinical skills model and we're going to do a two stage impression of the clinical skills model using a spacer. Yeah, the, um, the two stage impression technique is used with a spacer in this case because we're using a belt and braces approach to make sure that we don't damage any of the teeth on your model. Um, the two stage with spacer technique uses us more light body silicone so we're more likely to um, be kind to the teeth on your model and leave them in one place. So it, this is you mixing away. It also has the advantage that when you're taking the impression off your um, cast once you've, once you've poured your die stone into this material, um, you're less likely to break the, the teeth on the cast as well. So you've used um, equal portions of the uh, heavy body putty, so it's a, it's a putty base material and a putty catalyst, isn't it? It is. And you mix them together and blend them uh, using your hands. And we're just going to use a regular stock tray for this. There's probably not quite enough material in there, ideally it should have a little bit more at the back. Uh, that's the sheet of plastic that we're using. And that's one sheet, isn't it? One sheet of plastic, yeah. That's just going to stop the material going into all the undercuts between the teeth and it's going to leave us the space for the low viscosity material to go in afterwards. You can see there's quite a bit of force being used there. Uh, you can see the material um, coming through the holes on the tray. That's going to act as a retention, so we're not using any tray adhesive in this case. That was about three minutes gone there at least, and you want to use a fingernail test, and if you can make a dent in it with your fingernail, it's, uh, it's not ready. And in this particular case, it wasn't quite ready, <laughs> never mind. Um, so we had to leave it around for a little longer. The next stage then is to um, remove any uh, excess material in the impression. So you can see I've just got a blunt scalpel in this case and trying to get rid of the, some of the excess material. That's where there was um, a tooth missing, where you've got mm -hmm. your pontic for your uh, metal ceramic bridge. And then to cut round um, the periphery of the tray and take away the excess. What you're trying to do is just create a special tray for the patient which you're then going to use with the low viscosity material to take the detailed impression. Yeah, it's quite important to relieve the edges of the tray because when you put the light bodied silicone in you want um, a route for it to escape so that you don't end up with too thick an area of it. The reason that um, we don't just use the light bodied material is because we'd get too much um, contraction as it sets. This is, uh, this is the gun then for the application of the silicone and uh, you can see the cartridge for the light body silicone being placed into the gun. It's got a locating notch so if you're forcing it um, you're doing it wrong. Um, the end cap comes off and there's two little nozzles on the end isn't it for the two components yeah. and then there's a disposable mixing nozzle that goes on the same way so um, you just reverse the operation and then you can prime the gun if you like by squeezing it a few times to uh, to get it ready. So this is loading the impression then. You're trying to avoid air being trapped under the material. Um, you want quite a hefty amount in there really to make sure that you're going to cover uh, the occlusal surface of the teeth and the um, palatal and buccal sides of the teeth. You can um, load it preferentially to um, to the front very slightly, you don't need quite so much um, around the eights, otherwise it's going to be starting to tickle tonsils. Um, so this is you um, putting it around all the teeth of interest and you're using the force of the silicone coming out of the gun to, to press it into the interstices. Um, you don't want to be dragging the nozzle away because you'll just incorporate air into it and pull it away. Yeah, try and push the material in rather than dragging it around the teeth. And that's just covering the occlusal surfaces to make sure that we don't get any blows in the occlusal surfaces. Not being quite so fussy about those because it's not the detailed margins that we need to record. And I've just put a bit in the puntic space there so that you're not going to get a big, um, big hole. hole. Yeah. Um, as you can see we're being quite liberal with the light bodied silicon and that is the flaw in the technique really that you are likely to get slightly more shrinkage using this technique because of the lack of filler in that silicone. Um, there we go. Again, you can see that we're using quite a bit of um, pressure to, to reseat this tray, and we keep the pressure on because you want the 
uh, low viscosity material to flow uh, around the teeth and, um, and squeeze out the edges of the tray. You don't want to press it too quickly and distort the tray. That was a good three or four minutes there again in that cut, the magic of the movies there. Um, again the fingernail test. And the impression should come off and you can see, hey presto, we've got a perfect impression with no blows there. Mm. And you can come and inspect this later if you wish. Okay, job done. Excellent.